Thank you, Lester. Um, so, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, dear colleagues. This is the second lecture of Onomastics Online this year, and we are very happy that this event is again part of the collaboration between ICOS, the International Council of Onomastics, uh, Onomastic Sciences, and Abralin, the Brazilian Linguistic Association. Today, however, ICOS is the host of the lecture. So, on behalf of ICOS, I would like to welcome Adelaida Silva, the president of the Brazilian Linguistic Association, who will be the chair of this event together with me. But uh, she said that she has to leave even before the end of this event. After the lecture on the onomastics of Libras in January, which was a, a real success, today we will again have a really special topic, the onomastic studies of Parcateyed, an indigenous language in Brazil. The speaker is Marília Ferreira, and thank you very much for accepting our invitation and providing us with this exciting topic. Marília Ferreira is a full professor at Federal University of Pará and a researcher at the National Council of Scientific and Technological Development in Brazil. She is a multi-talented expert. She got her PhD in linguistics in Australia in 2003. And besides linguistics, she has been working in the field of indigenous education, advising on a project to train indigenous teachers for their communities. Her main areas of interest are description and documentation of Amazonian indigenous languages and cultures with an emphasis on morphosyntax, linguistic typology, theory and linguistic analysis, as well as issues related to language policy, educational sociolinguistics, and the description and teaching of the Portuguese language and Libras. She approaches names, emphasizing the interdisciplinary nature of this field, especially the importance of the interaction between linguistic studies and disciplines such as anthropology for our understanding of the onomastic system of the indigenous languages. And today she is going to talk about the anthroponyms of Pakatea language using this approach. As always, I wish a wonderful time for us. Thank you. And now I would like to ask Adelaide if she would like to add some, some more information. Um, hello, everybody. The introduction uh, Kathleen has just made is perfect. Um, I would like to thank ICOS for this partnership. Um, the partnership uh, I've already told uh, Kathleen is something that is uh, very fruitful. This partnership in particular has been very fruitful and uh, we hope we can uh, have many other um, conferences together. And today I have to apologize because after um, setting this conference, I had uh, an appointment set in my university. So I have to leave you uh, now but I wish you all a great uh, time, a very fruitful conference. And I thank Marilia for being here today. I also uh, would like to add that this um, uh, work Marilia uh, uh, does uh, at her university is a very important one because as many others that uh, our colleagues in the north uh, of Brazil are conducting, uh, these researchers um, aim to um, uh, uh, reconstruct and to um, save languages for, uh, uh, of indigenous people. And as you know, uh, they were under attack um, during the last four years. Maybe you all uh, know about the Yanomami uh, people that have uh, have faced uh, very hard times, and um, this work Marilia is conducting uh, has also um, a, a social impact uh, towards the, the indigenous population in the north of Brazil. So uh, I thank her for being here today and for uh, talking to us and to our colleagues about this language, uh, about this language. So um, 
once more, I wish you all a very uh, fruitful experience and um, a great time. Bye bye. I hope to see you soon again. And now, Marilia, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Adelaide. Um, I'd like really to thank uh, ICOS and Berlin for having me here today to talk about onomastic in Paracateji. I'm going to just to put the, the, the PPT here to start. Oh, we see it. Okay, now it is. I'm very sorry again. And if I can, if I have some time, I'm going to talk about Onomastiki in Paracateje, that is an indigenous language uh, from Brazil. As I, as I, I was introduced before, I'm working at Federal University of Pará in north of Brazil. And uh, this research was conducted by, um, in, initially, by Professor Leopold de Araújo and I. And we just made a preliminary approach about the names, proper names in Paracateji. Uh, later, a student of mine, Teresa Tainá Coutinho Lopes, uh, have studied deeply the onomastic and toponym, toponymy in the language and presented a PhD thesis last year. Uh, as, as you can see here, let me try. Mm. Just one moment. <laughs> I cannot change the, the, the PPT. As I told you, I'm not in Belém. I am out of the city. And this is the problem. I am not uh, working with my staff. Uh, Paracateje uh, is part of the... the Timbira dialectal complex, as uh, Rodrigues called before, with all the eight, nine languages. And those languages were spoken. Uh, just one moment. Uh, in uh, East to Arayne coast in Pará and uh, east of Maranhão. So this is a map of Brazil uh, with the distribution of uh, macro G languages. So there, is, there are lots of regions, uh, a few, not uh, too many, but the biggest ones, uh, where we cannot find macro G languages. And here, we have a highlighted map of Pará State uh, where we can find this uh, red square here is Belém, the capital of the state. And when we go down to this Tocantins River, we arrived in Marabá. So uh, Paracateje and the other Timbira languages used to walk, the, the, the people who speak this language, walk all this region. They just were uh, nomad and they live in all this part of the, the north, the, the region, north region. And those lands are, those lands are very, Coveted by non-white, uh, by the white people, by the enterprise and things like, so they had uh, they had to move all of them from, for example, Tocan uh, 
from this part of Pará into Curuí, some of them moved down to Marabá. Marabá is the biggest city, and 30 kilometers after the city, it is the, the village, the land. So this land uh, had lots of uh, different projects for the progress. Uh, and uh, one of this it was the construction of a highway in the land. So these people decided, this group, uh, headed by Topramre Paracatege Krohokrenum, they decided to live together, to form one big community, and they lived together until 2000. They asked for Valley, the of the enterprise, to, uh, uh, to, to pay them an immediate, uh, uh, how can I say, a compensation for this problem, the, the, the building, the, the, the highway inside the lands. So they changed a lot their way of living. Here you can see the, the village. The first village was that one to the left. And later they start to begin, they start to construct the other one on the right. And nowadays, uh, these people are spread uh, in about 20 villages in this land, in all of that. So we uh, made our research in the main one, in the, the principal village, because there are lots of small, very small villages with two, three, four, five families. And we stay in the biggest one where we could find the speakers because the language is in danger. Uh, there are just few old people that speak fluently the language as an native speakers and things like. So, uh, we just start to study the names because we start first to study. Okay. So we started to work, to work about onomastic because uh, we first start to study kinship terms. And we discovered that uh, the names the given names, the proper names were very, very related with that. So we really uh, comprove it like that, that onomastic is this field of linguistics that uh, make this close relation of language and culture. So uh, based in, in concepts like that you can see in the, the in the screen, uh, we just conduct our work in Paracatege about this. So we have very clear that onomastic is really this interdisciplinary area of investigation, and we start to uh, walk more in this road, looking for the names, the kinship terms, and toponymy also. So uh, all of these readings we made uh, with Teresa, and we started to, to go in that. Uh, the two main areas covered by onomastics, uh, as you know, it's anthroponymy and toponymy. And Seabra, that is a Brazilian researcher, said that anthroponymy has uh, its objective of studying individual proper names, parental names or surnames and nicknames, while toponymy is interested in study of the motivation of proper names of places. So it was uh, a very, very interesting new way to study uh, linguistics in, uh, with the indigenous 
uh, corpus. So we start to do this. Uh, the nomination in Paracatej is very interesting. The, the act of naming a child in Paracatej involves the systems endogamous and the sponsorship, sponsorship system to initiate a person in the world. So uh, what happens, uh, somebody uh, uh, studied this before, but not with the eye for onomastic. He studied just the kinship terms with some tips about onomastic without this name. And uh, Marcela Coelho de Souza, who is a professor in Universidade de Brasília and who is an anthropologist, she studied the relationships in Tibira, in Timbira, that is this complex, this dialectal complex uh, I told you before. Rodrigues just put like that because this nine languages, the this, their speakers, speakers uh, keep talking, each one in their language, and they can understand each other in, in more or less, uh, with more or less difficulties. Like, for example, English from American and English from Australia, like that, with some difference in pronunciation and some difference, some syntactical differences also. So, Marcela Coelho de Souza says about the, the nomination, the, the, the act of giving a name to someone, that intimate relationships, when receive a name, the nominee also potentially receives all relationships of its nominators. So, uh, the relationship, uh, someone to give a name, must be uh, blood relatives. So if a family has a boy, I have this, this is, I'm gonna go uh, down and then I, I come back. So if a family has a boy, a baby boy, uh, the mother's relatives are going to give the name. If the family has a baby girl, the, the father's relatives give the name. And then what she said is they got, they got from the nominator, the blood relatives or by affinity, as well the ceremonial relationships and formal friendship. Some uh, relationships in this, in this area, in these people, for to these people are very interesting, are taboo relationships. So the formal friendship is something like that. It, you have somebody who cares about you, but with, with whom you cannot, with whom you cannot talk, you cannot touch, you cannot even uh, look in the eyes. So this is a formal friendship. Uh, it is something, some kind of relationship uh, of evitation, as we say in anthropology. So the, the, the kid, the baby, when got his name, he's going to get all of this, blood or affinity relatives, ceremonial relationships. So if it is somebody that, uh, use it to, to sing in the ritual parties, he is going to do this uh, later. And also the formal friendships. So the potential relations are going with the name. And also the ritual helps. For example, in one moment, in one ritual, all the community is shared in two groups when they have a party of birds, for example. So one group is hawk and another one is pan. Hawk is hawk in English. 
I was I was thinking uh, that Paracatejo maybe Timbira gave this land this this word to English. I'm not sure. And pen is Macau. So one moment is like this. If you are hawk or pen, or if you have doubts about that, you just look for the sponsor who gives your name uh, and you find your health. Uh, another party, another ritual is this uh, of animals from the water. So we have tap, stingray, and otter. And all of this has body paint patterns uh, that, uh, how can I say, that concretize, that show this heavy for the society. So this, all of this is going with the name, with the nomination. And the transmission of uh, personal names in Paracatege is going like I, I told you before. Uh, if we have a baby boy, I'm sorry, the kitty, the uncle, the mother's brother, is going to give the name for this baby. And uh, if it is uh, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, grandchild, it, the fathers of fathers also can give the name. It's a kind of a choice. And if we have, if, if a family has a baby girl, the father's system, the oldest is going to give the name for all the for the to the brother's daughter. And the name, how these names are chosen? Uh, the name is based in a trait, in a characteristic of the nominee dom, nominator. Uh, that give this name to the baby. It can be positive, negative, good or bad. It is a name created in this, in this trait. Uh, Manuela Carneiro da Cunha clarifies that the name received by a child doesn't have any relation to the personal attributes of that child and does not aim at designate him or her as an individual, but it is something like that. So it's a, it's a very interesting way uh, because we, we did this, we, uh, Teresa said this in, in her thesis, that it's a kind of uh, try, say, for perpetuate the, the to, to be uh, unforgettable for your family, something like that. So uh, here I have some examples of nouns. For example, we have, I, the translation is always uh, less than we can say, we can, they, we, they can say with this name. So taquoi, this koi, this non koi, is uh, the girl who dances in front of the singer during the ritual party. So there are lots of uh, girls' name with this koi. So takoi is the girl who dances in front of the singer during the ritual party that loves to dance in the rain. Uh, the second name, Purukore, is the field woman. It's some woman that likes to, uh, to have lots of uh, fields to plant and to, things like, to do things like. Harachara is the name, uh, is sore wing. And this sore wing is uh, because this guy, this man, uh, used it to use the, the, the arrow, and bow a lot, and that's why he is with uh, the a hurt arm. 
Is this the reason? Então, Pramra is somebody that's like the to fight, it's like the war and things like that. So, the transmission of proper names in Paracatege occurs in the following way, according to Arnaud, that is somebody that works with the kinship terms first in, in, in 1964, may occur from the mother's brother to the sister's son and from the father's sister to the brother's daughter, uh, preferentially, and also from the father's or mother's father and from the mother's of father's mother, grandmother, which are designated by the same terms. The kinship terms in this language is very interesting too because they have a set of uh, lexical items uh, specifically to the kinship terms for the, parent, the, the father side and the mother side. So you don't have ambiguity for that. Regarding to linguistic properties related to the formation of these proper names in Paracatege, we observed that these names may uh, be constituted by different classes, word classes. So in general, we have more noun and noun, but we have also noun and verb, noun, verb, and a particle, something like that. So as you are going to see another uh, examples in front. So for example, one, known, one name uh, of a woman is Amkronan, that means sunshine day. Amkro is uh, something like uh, uh, summer, summertime. Inan is a particle that means in that. So, in that summer, we they translated to us as sunshine day. Nankruati is a noun for a guy. So, nan is a particle, a locative. Kruati is crua, it's arrow. It is uh, augmentative. So, uh, literally, we could translate this like arrow in him. Or, I don't know how can I say this in English, in Portuguese, something like flechado, somebody that got uh, an arrow in his body, in his body, something like that. So, I asked to Teresa also, when we have been work with this, how can we say, how can we know uh, when one name, when a name is a feminine or masculine or for both, whatever. And we discovered that uh, there are some kinds of uh, activities, cultural activities that are not uh, allowed to be done for one or other group, uh, or at least is more common that women do or men do. And uh, this kind of thing with the arrow, ball, fight, and things like that is, is more to the men. But there are some women that do also uh, however, it's not the general uh, form. So these two names also, parhiti, parhiti, it's kind of pepper. So when they explain this name, it is a name for a woman, it's like uh, she is very naughty like a pepper, something like. Uh, the the nominator was like that. And hawk T, that means hawk. Uh, the translation for this, for them, is uh, hunter, a good hunter, something like. 
So here I have some pictures of these people uh, before all of this, this problem in the beginning. I thought I could not talk about toponymy because I had lots of things to talk more about onomastics. But here you have the first picture, for example, uh, we have author paint, body paint, and uh, in the right also, the both uh, pictures here show this guy dancing in a festival with this painting. This girl in the, the first picture has uh, a body pictures, a body paint, sorry, um, that is of tap, this uh, lines and the small points of Jeanne Papo, that is the, the, the kind of painter they use it there. And they all, they in the village used it to run with the Tora in the back. Here is a girl with the author, uh, paint, body painting. They use it lots of urukum in the body. This is a grand Tora. It's a great piece of wood they use it to, to run. And they are, uh, this body paint is from the group of Macau. And here we have also two, two, uh, two girls with the paint, uh, the body paint of uh, tap and uh, sing gray, the other one. Nowadays, they use it to, to make, uh, they buy fabric, white fabric, and they make paints in the fabric with the, the body paint they use it um, in the festival. And this is what I selected to talk. I mean, very, very uh, sad because I cannot speak like I was supposed to do, but I am here to answer if you have some questions or something to say about uh, onomastica in Paracatigi. So this, uh, all this, work show us that uh, there are lots of uh, common things, but uh, in linguistics, in onomastics, scientifically uh, talking, but there are lots of culture also embedded in all of this. Thank you, Marilia. Thank you for this really, interesting and informative uh, lecture about an absolutely different uh, naming system compared to our European personal name giving. And uh, now we have some time for questions and comments. You can use the chat or just turn on uh, the microphone. And the video. Thanks, Maria, for all. Marcia, you are muted. Uh, many thanks, Maria, for all the lecture. Very interesting. I'd like to know, Maria, if he. Parquete Onomastic is the indigenous people have the right to their names to become official names or yes. officially. How does it work now? Yes, they they now they nowadays when they just uh, run away from the problems and things like in the seventies. 
they started to use the Portuguese name. But when they decided to come together and to form this great group, they, this big community in Marcia, they decided also to, to make a return to their names, culture, dancing, food, whatever. And they used it a very interesting way to, to put surnames. I, we did, I didn't put this here, but they use it to put this name they get from the nominator, and they use the mother's name, the mother first one, first name, and the father uh, as the last surname. And uh, when they go to the cartórios or whatever, they... In the beginning, they had lots of difficulties to write down this. But as now they can write better, the problems are less than, than in, in the beginning, at least in the area where they go. I don't know if I answer your question. Yes, many thanks, Marie. I understood that the indigenous people now can go to a register office. And yes, they, exactly. they can officialize their names, and sometimes they need to create surnames. And yes. the, the process of name creation is so similar to the naming process of patronymic system. And the matronymic system is so interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. It is a, a decision that the community made, you know. So when somebody say the name, you know already who is the mother and the father because the name is there. It's very transparent. And uh, I also, I didn't men mention here, but for example, when the, the man has the first baby also, he got another name. So for example, if a man, has a, a baby girl and her name is Krohokre, they will call will be called by some people, by the old people at least. The sound with the audio. Uh, so as I was saying, the man when he has the first baby girl, for example, it is the first baby. He got the name Krohokren Hum. That means father of Krohokre. Something like that. But this is not now used. They are not using this anymore. But the oldest one say like that. They keep this, the name, the given name, and they got this name of father, father of uh, Kathleen, father of Marcia, for example. If you have another question, you please just say. Right, we are waiting. May I ask uh, about the characteristics of the place names, the toponyms in Pakateje? It, mm -hmm. it is the pronunciation, okay. Yes, but you can say Paracateye also. Mm -hmm. no okay. Mm -hmm. So, can you talk about the, the toponyms, the place names? The toponym uh, has a different formula than that, than the, the proper names. So, they have expressions specifically for, for example, uh, geographic parts. So if we if we have um, rivers or lakes or something like that, there is this uh, a kind of expression, a kind of uh, um, noun phrase that means river, something like. And, uh, but there is a very interesting way also that is very similar what we use in, in modern languages. That is to call some places 
by the name of the people that live in that place. So they say, I'm going to uh, to this uh, this place, and in, 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 it is the name. I, I, I'm not really organized to talk about toponymy, but there are lots of very interesting things to to present also about that. Oh, it, it is quite, uh, it was at least quite typical in Hungarian, uh, actually. Yeah. They use uh, these um, names of people or names of groups of people to refer to the place where they lived or they, they, they were connected somehow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, Paracateje, Kathleen, that means people, uh, par means food. Kate is something like uh, owner, but it's not owner, the, the, possess the possession of some object. Not, it's not like that. It's somebody responsible or who lives or who care or who are in some place. This kate. And G, that means uh, people. So people who live in the uh, in the, the, the lowest part of the river, something like that, you know. So para kateje is kateje is people who live in the upside of the river. And Things like, so it's very interesting the way they make this composition to, to create toponymies also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? I'm just there wondering is, if, with that. oh, there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a. Oh, thank you. Message. Very, very yeah. kind. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if there is any, like, kind of nicknaming system uh, in yeah. this language. So they always use this whole name that you mentioned yeah. as, as an example, or, or do they use a shorter form or another form instead? Yes, very nice question. Very, very good question. Yes, the names are very long, so they cut. So when do you, you have this taquoi, uh, taraquoi, pimpquoi, they, they call quoi all of them. And uh, for the woman, for example, there are another uh, noun that is very, very common. It's Jean. Jean Pramre, Jean Para... Jean... Uh, now, Jean... They call Jean. But there are no different nouns like that. So there is, yes, there is a very interesting nickname system. And for the men also, uh, if you have, for example, something like Pem Crua, Crua Te, they call Crua, that it means flecha, that means arrow, sorry, and things like so. It's very interesting. It's a kind of uh, a very, very interesting topic for an article and a paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for this. Yeah, yeah. How they use their, lang their names in, in uh, real life. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you too. If there isn't any other question or comment, I don't see any um, raised hand or something like that. Then I would like to thank you again um, for this 
really interesting uh, lecture. And uh, even contrary uh, to the all the technical issues, it was really interesting and interesting you, introduction sir. to this topic. Thank you. Thank oh, you <laughs> hello. <laughs> Bye bye. Thank you. And and before we are leaving, I I just would like to remind you that the next lecture of Onomastics Online is is going to be in March March um, twenty two, when uh, Angel Iglesias over here will give us a presentation in French about the dictionary of anthroponyms in uh, Spanish proverbs. So see you soon. Uh, in March, and thank you very much for thank participating, you. And also for the lecture. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>